powder just poofs everywhere with this one. You have lots of poofing powder with this palette. Hey guys, welcome back. So we've got a quick swatch and review video for y'all today on these eyeshadow palettes from Jordana. These are the Made to Last eyeshadow collection. So I've got three different ones to show you. So I'm gonna run through the different ones, show you swatches, kind of talk about the formula and just what I'm thinking about them and just my overall thoughts and opinions and reviews. So let's jump into it. These palettes retail for $7.99 each. I bought mine on the Jordana website. I'm not sure if these are going to be carried in stores or certain stores or which stores, but I haven't seen them in stores, so I bought mine on the Jordana website for $7.99. And they have eight different ones on their website, so eight different color options or palette options. Um, as far as the price, I think the price is really fair, so I like the $7.99 price point. Um, I think that the packaging is nice. I mean, it feels sturdy and not super cheap or anything. It feels like kind of thick, sturdy plastic, um, but not like super amazing or gorgeous. It's not like the best packaging I've ever seen, but I think it's nice for the price. So, and I, I also like that it's compact. It's not like a super duper waste of space or anything like that. It comes with a little spongy situation that, you know, I mean, they're okay. If you like these sponge tip applicators, you know, it works, but I typically use brushes. So yeah, I think the packaging is nice. Price point's good. So running through the swatches, I want to start with the one that's pretty much a fail for me personally. This one is Dusk Till Bronze. So you can just see it in the palette. Like, look at all that kick up there. Like, powder just poofs everywhere with this one. You have lots of poofing powder with this palette. So it's, I mean, you can kind of see it in there, but it's mainly up on the lid. It just goes everywhere. Now looking at it in the swatches, you're gonna go, what's the matter with it? Like, it doesn't really look bad in swatches. And honestly, it's more just certain shades, really just this one and this one. The rest of them aren't that bad. Like if you avoid those two, avoid this one and this one, those two kind of lighter shades, then you'll probably be pleased with this palette. But those two right there are just little stinkers. I mean, they just get like, powder everywhere all over your face and I did find like glittery fallout throughout the day so that's really disappointing because honestly I mean this is a really nice cream shade and all of those are really nice so I guess if you just avoid those two this is a nice palette but with those in the mix it totally would ruin the eyeshadow looks that I was going for so yeah if I were to use this palette again I would avoid those two for sure. Next we have Plum Believable. So this is more of a kind of plummy, slightly smoky sort of palette. Really pretty, very cool toned, very purpley toned, kind of like burgundy sort of shade. So there is this one swatched. So it looks beautiful in swatches. Like, especially this one looks like, wow. But with this one, you're really gonna need something sticky if you use this shade right here. I was so excited to use this one, but I mean, it got everywhere, all over my face, everywhere. This one too had a lot of fallout, which I can handle fallout, but this was like all over my face and sticking there, like staying there throughout the day. Like I couldn't get it off my face. So I just kind of looked like a glittery mess. So, oh, I don't know. Like, I think they're beautiful. I think they look really pretty, but I just think that they're really a lot of trouble. Like you're really gonna have to use a glitter glue, try to get it to stick, and I mean, you can even see that just that little silver glitter, that gets everywhere. But again, if you avoid that shade right there, which looks the prettiest, so that's kind of torture. If you avoid that one, the other ones are really nice. Like the mattes are really nice and buttery. They blend nicely. Um, none of these palettes really have good transition shades. So I was using all of them with my bronzer just as my transition. So you're gonna need to bring in something like that, you know, to get a complete eye look. But anyway, it's pretty. I do like this one, but just, oh, this one just frustrates me because it looks so pretty, but it's just high maintenance. Lastly, we have my very favorite one. This one is Beachy Keen. Now this one, I would say, yes, go out and buy this palette because I love it. It's a really pretty, I think, Beachy Keen is a great name for it because it's a very beachy, warm, you know, peachy pink sort of a look. It's just really, really beautiful. It has that sort of tropical look. So I love the color selection in it, but look at these swatches. 
This is so pretty. And this one performs so nicely on the eyes. No real fallout, maybe just a little bit, but none of that chunky glitter that gets everywhere. It's just really beautiful metallic shadows. Really gorgeous. But then you've got a couple of mattes, like this one and this one. They're almost more kind of like satins, but those have a really nice texture too. Oh my gosh, I love this one. I'm wearing it on my eyes today. It performs beautifully. They, I mean, they look as pretty on the eyes, I think, as they do in the pan. And they have that sort of texture that really does like build on itself, like this gold especially, and these two. It just builds on itself, so you can really get that intense metallic sheen. So pretty. So I already kind of touched on the formula on these shadows. It really does depend on which specific shadow you're talking about because some are great, most are great. Like the metallics are really great, the mattes are really nice, but then you have those problem glittery shades. So it really depends on which shadows you're talking about as far as how the formula is. I think that the formula is really nice on the metallics and the mattes, but those glittery shades are really a problem. That's why I love Beachy Keen because you don't have any of those shades in it. So really, I love the formula on most of them, except for those glittery ones, those are a problem. As far as like how they work, how they wear, the ones that aren't the glitters work really well, blend really well, apply nicely and wear well throughout the day. Just avoid the glitters and I think you'll be good. I think you'll like the formula on them and I think that you'll like how they perform, how they blend together and how they wear well throughout the day. So my overall review on these palettes is that I like them. I mean, I love Beachy Keen. So this one is a love, 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 love this one. But I do really like Plum Believable minus that glittery shade. I think just my overall review on these is that it's gonna depend on the palette. I mean, I know that's kind of like a hard review because I only have these three to show you. I wanna try more, but I think it's really just gonna depend on which palette. So if we can kind of figure out which ones have more of those glittery shades and avoid those and find out which ones have more of those beautiful metallic shades, those are the ones that I wanna try more of. So if I can do more research and I try more of these, I will definitely keep you posted on that. But overall, I like the ones that have more of the metallics and the mattes in them. I think those are really, really nice, but those glittery shades are a no-go. All right, guys, so that wraps up this review video. So I hope that you really enjoyed it and I hope it was helpful for you. Please give a thumbs up if it was, and let me know down below what you think about these palettes, if you've tried them, which ones are some of your favorites. I would love to know that. Ask me any questions that you have. I'm happy to answer those. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.